Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And today we're going to school you in class, sewing class etiquette. etiquette. It's really class etiquette for almost anything. Mom takes uh, classes at our gym. Yep. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah, well, three or four days a week at least. In fact, every time Zelda says, where's sugar? <laughs> and I'll say like, I don't know, or maybe, you know, or sugar's at her house or something. She'll go... At the gym. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> because you are quite often at the gym. That's right. <laughs> anyway, so we were talking about class etiquette, and mom and I used to run a sewing store where we taught classes, right? Yes. In fact, I think I taught classes all my life now that I've thought about it. Yeah. But in one thing or the other, right? Um, and what has prompted this particular broadcast is, or podcast, is that. I was in a class the other day, and the class had started, and 15 minutes into the class, these three people all walk in together, and they want to be part of the class. Uh They just walked in. It was over 15 minutes late, and the teacher said, you know, I really can't have you in class. I I can't set up for you. This is not fair to the rest of the people. And um, she got some evil eyes from those students because she turned them away. And I totally understood what she was talking about. Um, This is a class where, you know, it was a, it was a, uh, aerial hammock class so you have to set up the hammock to fit the person um, so you know everybody has to be set up and there's also a warm-up period in order for you not to get injured that kind of thing and um, you know she was actually just being um, cautious and safe, safe. right safe. right right she was be- also, right so it also made you have like flashbacks to well right right because well other than the fact that it, it's just rude to be that late I in in my you know in my I think it's rude to be late. Whether okay. somebody has to set up or wait for you or right. what, it's rude to be late. Right. But, um, well, yeah, because I would equate this with a sewing class and the fact that oftentimes when we gave classes, people would be bringing in their own machines and we would have to set them up for them, right? Uh-huh. And they'd have to be set up ahead of time. Um, sometimes there would be people with different types of machines, so we would group them. Right. So that, you know, similar machines were next to each other. So if, if, you know, they were asking questions about that machine or we were demoing on that machine or something, you know. So there were oftentimes reasons to set it up. So so rule number one, arrive on time. Right. Or if they say 10 minutes before class so you can set up. Do 10 minutes before class. Don't do an hour and a half before class and bring your lunch and expect to eat it at the table where they're going to set up the class. Yeah. That doesn't work either. You know, we used to have some people and they'd say, I'm going to be in town at this point. Can I come drop off my machine or something? I mean, And that's fine. Sure. Of course checking ahead of time and maybe maybe we would be nice and let you eat your lunch who knows but uh, you know let well, we also had other areas where they could eat their lunch yeah, where, let, where we had our shop let yeah. someone know if you need some kind of special consideration but being on time is so important because especially with machines you know you talked about setting up the aerial hammocks right. you gotta like Maybe you have to reach across like five people to plug in your right. machine. Right. There's plugs. There's chairs. There's taking, are are taking you know things out of carriers and placing the carriers in another area where they're not in the way while or you're we, teaching class. We told you to set up for this right stitch, and now you're you weren't there. Or you came without your presser foot, so now we have to find one. That happened. That yep. That's not uncommon. That something like that happens. Right. Exactly. So arrive in a timely manner. Right. And I, you know, we used to always tell people 10, 15 minutes before class, if you're here, we're fine. Yeah. 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 Um, I think another thing is don't bring someone along who's not registered in the class. We had had that happen. Amen. We have had people bring a spouse who only just gets in the way. <laughs> I, I mean, because they don't know why they're there anyway. Right. You know, or we've had them bring a friend. Well, it might be okay. 
and it might not be okay. That's right. You need to check with the person giving the class. And, you know, there would be sometimes where somebody would say, well, my mother's in town. Can she just come and sit and sort of audit with me? Well, uh, you know, probably. Probably okay. Probably. Yeah. Now, if the class was busting full, I would have to say to you, your mother can come, but I'm not sure she can even be in the classroom area. You know, it, it. I mean, you can only tell people what's really happening. Well, the other thing is, uh, I mean, I see a lot of sewing stores on Instagram that have these beautiful, huge, spacious classrooms. Right. But we didn't always have that. It was literally the classroom was big enough to accommodate the well, students I don't and their know machines. If, I don't know if you remember when we did have big classrooms, but sometimes we had two classes going on. That's right. You know, you it, right. I mean, usually you're you're filling your store to capacity. Yeah. I mean, you say I have ten spots left in this class because or in this class because you have ten spots in the class. Well, and you want to fill the class with well, paying people you know, too. The other thing that <laughs> happened to us, and I don't know if you remember this, but someone just brought a friend one time. Now our teachers worked basically on commission. Yeah. So, you know, there was a tuition that was paid and they got a percentage of that tuition. Right, right. Right? And that knowledge was, you know, there was knowledge there to be transferred to you or related to you because you paid to take this class because the teacher prepares for it. She takes her time. It's her experience. All of these things. And this person brought a friend who we knew was a sewer. Right, right. And who had taken classes there before. And she just comes sort of in like late. And all of a sudden this person's sitting there and we don't know how to handle it. And she sat through the class and got all of this information free. And that's really awkward. Guess what? Everybody else paid. Yeah, everyone else paid. And then you as the shop owner, like if it was your class, you could, if it was your personal class, like ZD's class, right. you could decide to deal with it. But you as the shop owner, if you're working with a contracted teacher, well, that person, you know, was getting their info. So you may feel like you have to pay them and you didn't get the money. Well, right. You know? I mean, yeah. it's, it's people are taking a class. The people are pay, paying for the class are the ones that deserve to get the most out of the class. And why would you bring somebody in and think that your friend can get it free? It right. doesn't even make sense. Well, I mean, I, I, I was shocked when that happened. I think that was another thing. Mallory's baby's grunting, in case yeah, anybody there, hears there it. There might be a little baby grunting. <laughs> Just, yeah. Oh, so don't bring your baby to class without permission. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I had, I've had that where people say, can I bring my baby I am breastfeeding. And as long as you ask ahead of time, we make arrangements. One time I had to tell someone she couldn't. We were in a very small space. Is it because you hate people who breastfeed? It's, I hate babies. Yes. <laughs> I just, right. babies make me ill. I just can't stand them around sewing machines. It in just case, makes me go crazy. In case anyone doesn't get this, I just got, like, <laughs> literally, like, while we're, while we're recording this, just got finished nursing my baby. But I, I'm paying for the hosting fees for the podcast, right? So well, we that's can true. Do that. You can do yeah. whatever you okay. want. Okay. But, but I did have to tell um, a person one time that they would have to choose between bringing their baby and breastfeeding their being able to breastfeed their baby or just bringing their sewing machine. I knew there was not enough room for the baby and the sewing machine. Yeah. I mean, there literally was not enough room. And I had, you know, and I, I mean, that's all we can do. Well, you know, the class wasn't set up for breastfeeding mothers. It just wasn't. But that, we have had people breastfeed and take class. That class <clears throat> happened in, like, whatever two or three locations ago with the shop right it was, was really a very small, small location now then we had a bigger location one time and I remember someone asking if they could bring their baby and I think the teacher said yes but she also brought like her baby and her mother yes and the stroller yes. and right stuff. right and it was the baby full, was taken care of but, but it was right. no, it was a full class and yeah. it was it was, it was still crowded much. well I mean, and this comes up just I think basically maybe distractions in general. Yeah. Your cell phone really should be off. Okay. If you need to answer your cell phone, you need to pick it up and leave the area. Get out of and the I mean room. the area. Get- <laughs> I don't mean you step over two steps and then go, what do you mean Johnny fell off his bike? I mean, no. Okay. That is- you needed to take that phone call. But the rest of the people that paid for that class did not need to take that, that phone call. That is the worst. That is so the worst. And if you think somebody can't hear you, they can. 
that yeah, that yeah. would happen sometimes, and I just couldn't believe that people would sit there on their phone. Well, and fortunately, it, sometimes if that happened, and maybe say Mallory was teaching and I was standing there, I could take the person by the arm and sort of escort them away. Right. But if you're teaching the class, you know. You have to decide whether you're going to stop relaying information to your people that have mm-hmm. paid, that are there and interested in taking your class, or you're going to stop and ask that person to move away because they can't hear what you're saying, or it's so distracting that they're talking about their family or whatever. So you have to think about these things. I mean, there has to be class etiquette if, ever, if it's going to be fair to everybody. I just always love the they'd answer the phone. And they'd be like, well, I'm in a sewing class. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you're annoyed enough to tell them you're in a sewing class. But like, maybe you could just, like, not answer the phone. Or you could get up and, like, everyone else is in their sewing class, too. You know, and that would that would happen. Right. So, that would happen a lot. And it just, it, it robs the other people. Yes. The teacher is, the teacher, you know, the teacher is trying to keep this class a value for everyone that's in it. That's right. They're trying to keep it a value. The other thing that's really hard, I guess, is student input. That's what I was going to bring up next. Yeah. <laughs> when you were you're talking about the teacher, the teacher, the teacher. Right. Remember. Remember who, who the, teacher the teacher is. is. Yeah. Yeah. And if you guys think that ZD and I have never been in a class where we thought, oh, honey, hell no, to some information oh, that yeah. we heard. You can think again. Okay. Yep. So just, just, I know that it can, sometimes if you hear something in a class that you maybe disagree with, or you feel like you have a better way, or you just get really excited, a lot of times it's really not one's place as a student. Right. To give. Well, I've had people give. Any information. Truly what I felt was terrible information. Right. Not alternate information or a different way of doing it, but information that I knew was going to lead the person into trouble. Mm -hmm. And you have to try and diplomatically say, now I have tried that before or I know that that gets done but here is why I don't feel so you have to go into this explanation and try and erase that out of the other students heads because here's what happens if you don't next week Betty comes in and says well I heard in your class that if you you know sewed upside down with the needle in the wrong way it would work better and you go you did hear that in my class, but I did not say that. So that was another student. ZD you know, gets. I have to kind of talk ZD off a ledge sometimes because. Oh yeah, I'm the only one that ever gets on a ledge here. Well, in in this particular <laughs> instance, because we don't have a store anymore, right? We don't teach like weekly classes right. to the public in this same way, right? 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 right. Um, but we have a group of over 10,000 members, mm-hmm. and people will ask questions in the group. And believe it or not, ZD and I try to answer just about every question. And also, we will definitely try to answer a question if we are tagged in the post. Right. I'm not, we are active as all get out in right. that group as much as possible. Even when I have birthed a baby seven hours before, <laughs> right. I will get in the group and I will put people in their place if they get out of place. Um, so when we when people ask a question in the group, sometimes we have to do that diplomatic thing. Right. A lot of times, though, people do answer the question in a good way, but it's a little, it's a different environment than a class. If it is a good answer, I just like it to death. That's right. Because then I don't have to answer it. Or I try to say, you know, yes. Yeah, or I agree with Lonnie, which I seldom say. I mean, it happens sometimes, (laughs) you know. (laughs) So... I, but sometimes mom will be like, oh, my God, did you see this person told, you know, them to do this? Right. And I was like, well, all we can do is share our view. Share our view, right. But, you know, sometimes I think it's really good fuel for our content. It, it is. It's like, okay, we see this information gets shared over and over again that they that people think that you must have a walking foot for your sewing machine to sew on knits. Oh, yeah. This is something we do not believe. Uh, so we recorded a podcast about it, and I feel so much better about, like, sharing that. Right. Instead of, like, being proactive or productive right. Right. versus sort of, like, being reactive. Right. The other thing that we're working on a video about that we will be linking the bejesus out of is the three-thread narrow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, nobody <laughs> believes in the three no thread one, narrow like I do. No one, uh, well, not no one, but <laughs> a lot of only people, my disciples. 
a lot of people think that you must use a four thread. Right. I guess, I guess what we're saying is, anyway, yeah. And, and I have also seen people, and this happens in class too, that they're giving in the, they're not only giving the wrong information, they're not even answering the question that was asked. So, you know, obviously they haven't heard the question correctly or they haven't read the credit, but in, you know, I've heard that's happened in our clubs or in our classes Well, where, you know, somebody stands up and says, oh no, this is this way or whatever. And we happen to know it's not. Maybe it's because we've taught so much and we'll just wrap up this little yeah. segment before the break. But I have never been in a class, even when I think the teacher is saying something like really wrong. Right. Where I've thought, oh, now is the time. For me to I, show my well, expertise. Yes, where right. where I will speak up, da, da, da. Like, I've been right. in a lot of sewing classes, guys. Like, we, especially like a baby lock tech. Well. You know, but, and, but just really check yourself there. Yeah. And before we go to break, I guess there's a couple of students. There's students who ask, who say, is it true that a three thread narrow does this? So that's a question uh-huh. versus someone who who um, takes the approach at, of I'm the authority and not the teacher who, you know, would chime in and say something like, well, that's not right. Or what what would they say? How would they present it? But there are people that want to try to teach your class. Yeah, there. Yes. And you know what? Then they shouldn't be there. They don't need to take it. But, and it is going to happen. Yeah, and it happens. I think that's rude. I think it's rude to the students. I think it's rude to the teacher. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, let's take a quick message break here. Hey, Mom, what's your favorite thing to do in the whole wide world? It's when Sam and I get to cut yards and yards and yards of double brush poly for leggings kits. Well, great. Right now we're taking orders for leggings kits and you'll get to cut hundreds and hundreds of yards of fabric once again. Can you tell how happy I am? I'm, I know you're can excited. You, can you, can now, you feel my glee? You left out something. Not only do you get to cut a three yard cut of double brush poly for each right. kit, yes. you get to cut a half a yard of black power mesh. That's right. You get to cut a yard and a half of, of elastic. With, yeah, two kinds of elastic, right? Right, right, right. Quarter inch cotton yes, swimwear elastic. And one inch. And one inch cotton swimwear elastic. And then you don't have to cut any thread. We just pick that up and put it right. in. Right. I just have to make sure you order it. That's right. <laughs> and then we have to find a box for it to fit in. That's correct. And then we have to write love notes. Right. Uh huh. And we well, all... but first you have you print off the, the name. Yes. And and the and the um a dress label. That's right. And then we write the love note so we know who we're writing it to. And then we call Betsy a piece of trash, right? That's right. <laughs> so we have these leggings kits in stock, uh, the amount of but, fabric. But in a loving way. Yes. Yes. So we have these leggings kits in stock, and the amount of fabric they come with means that you'll be able to get at least two pairs of leggings one with the one inch elastic waistband that we teach in the class and one with the power mesh waistband and we've got a blog post up on the site for how to do that so make sure to go to sewhere.com slash leggings kit to get everything you need to make leggings including these super convenient kits sew, 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 sewing out loud and we're back oh and we're back with a word that reminds me of my daughter Mallory, troubleshooting. Because <laughs> I'm such a good problem solver. <laughs> yeah, that was. I it. just shoot the trouble. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Well, I think she this, knocked it down. This half of the episode might be a little bit of uh, advice for students, but also advice for teachers. Yeah, no, I agree. And we, like we said, we've taught and, yeah, lots and of classes. I feel, you know, I, I feel for every teacher out there because. There's always a circumstance that is the first time you've encountered it or something, and you go, oh, you know, I remember Jane one time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Jane <laughs> came to me, and she goes, oh, my gosh, so-and-so started crying in my class. Oh, no. That's, I, oh, and I said, what did you do to her? She goes, I didn't do anything. I swear I did. She goes, she just started crying, and I go, what did you do? And she goes, I gave her a Kleenex, and I thought, well, how appropriate. Good I probably would have stood there not knowing what, like, uh, what, what, oh, my God, this person's crying in my class. But anyway. I was thinking about 
Uh, one time Jane was doing a delivery. Poor Jane. I love Jane. I did, Jane's great. Uh, Jane, I don't know if she's listening to this, but one time Jane was doing a delivery and she was a serger and they were doing a three thread overlock narrow. Okay. And she brings the sample to me. She says, this looks terrible, Mallory. What am I doing? With, like, cause, cause the baby lock serger is like, if it's doing something wrong. If it's wrong, something wrong, it's you. You right. did something right. wrong, you know? And I'm like, okay. And I look and when you do a, Machine delivery, we would have the student do. A delivery is not a demo. The delivery is like, hey, hands on. This is how you do it. Now you do it. So you go home and you feel uh, capable. And the woman hadn't taken the left needle out. The, the stitch looked awful. Right. You know, and I was like, oh, oh, the left needle's in. And Jane was just like, oh my God, I feel so silly. You know, so she'd never had anybody accidentally leave that left Do that, right. In. It was just the first time you know? that circumstance happened, yeah. And then, uh, you know, I had a funny thing happen to me when I first started teaching a lot of classes. We had quite a few people not thread their take-up lever yeah, in that, their machine. Yeah. There was like a spate of them over like three months. And it makes your machine make a really loud clunking clunk, noise. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Yeah. And I was just like, why is this happening all because the time? Because it's not right taking now? up your thread. Yeah, but like, in why, your why are bobbin in your hook? Yeah. Why are so many people doing right. this right now? And I remember, you know, I've never done that. Right. I've never threaded the machine wrong in that way. Right. And I remember the first time I was like, oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> but let's talk about what if you as a student have a total machine meltdown in class. Well, right. Or, or if you, you know, a teacher. You're, you're, the teacher says, so this seam, she's giving you directions on, you know, length and stitch width or whatever, and and your machine's not doing it. Right. It's not working like you or the teacher expected it to. What's going to happen in that circumstance? And I, the best thing I can tell you is how we used to handle this. Now, uh-huh. we almost always had a tech on board, and Mallory and I are also have – always taken tech classes so we know a lot about sewing machines and not every teacher does right okay so you could not maybe even you could have threaded wrong and maybe a teacher won't catch it if she's not familiar with your sewing machine so our policy was that if the sewing machine was not working properly or you know or you, you tried a few things, rethreaded, or told the person to rethread and change needles, and it didn't work, you know, something simple like that. If it didn't work, what we did is we put one of our machines in front of you and, you're, you know, took your machine to the side because we don't have time to fix your machine while we're teaching class. Even if it, we would allow all brands in our class. Yeah, we were never brand snobs. And even if it was our brand of machine, right. we, we'd try to troubleshoot to a point. Right, you just can't spend all this time troubleshooting someone's machine and when I, you're teaching class. I always tried to be really diplomatic because a lot of time, well, um, maybe maybe this isn't why, maybe this is why we're not sewing machine dealers anymore because we would teach classes like to teach stuff, not to sell machines. <laughs> <laughs> and so people would bring in like other brands or something and we were fine with that. And I would replace it like with one of ours. And right. I'd say, I would have done this if it was one of our brand too. Right. We just want to get you going. And sometimes people would be like, well, I wanted to learn it on my machine. And I'm like, well, if your machine's not working. Well, and that was something know. that we always posted with instructions for the class. It said that you were to bring your machine in good, good working, working order. order with your owner's manual. That's right. Because people would bring machines that grandma gave them or, you know, Aunt Betty found in her garage and they weren't working or they had a quirky little something about them that maybe an owner's manual would help you learn to do. Well, I remember one time, you know, some of the machines thread, like, backwards a little bit. It's like... No, it, you just think that. They well, do not thread backwards. Well, you know, backwards. I mean, they don't <laughs> yeah, thread backwards. Yeah. But, you right. know, I've, I've encountered that. Right. Like, some of my teachers were unfamiliar. When I say backwards, it's like the take-up lever was flipped in relation to, like, the, what side of the needle it uh-huh. was on. You know what I'm talking about? And... uh yeah, so bringing the owner's manual yeah. in was super helpful for And that. bring your power cord. And bring your, oh, yeah. Please bring your power That's cord. Important. Please bring your power cord. <laughs> and everything that you bring to class should be labeled with your name on it. That's an excellent point. And then don't take anything that's not labeled yeah. with your and name on it Yeah, and if it, it doesn't home. have your name, and when you get home, maybe you should unpack your machine so that you realize you have someone else's power cord also that you took to home. Um, we that would w- happen. Now, our policy was when class was over, you someone went through the classroom and we picked up the glasses that were left or the scissors that were left, 
whatever was left, right? Uh Uh-huh. And we put it in the lost and found. That's right. Right? And we would put left after such and such class on such and such date. Now, sometimes we would even know who it was. Maybe right. Like if it was a pair of glasses we recognized, we'd put somebody's name on it and call them or something like that. But, but, And then people would call us two years after they took a class and say, I think I left my power cord. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it wasn't always there because... I don't think they left it in class. The, the yeah, pack, the the bringing things to class and the taking them away and only taking your stuff is so important. Yes. And yes. also, I've I've had people who like came to class and they said they they come to class and they don't have their power cord, right? Because they said, "Oh my gosh, I just never take my machine anywhere right. or whatever." And sometimes you can forget something. That's for sure. And they borrow one of right. ours. Now, one technique here for teachers, okay. And you had us do this for a while. Yeah. If someone borrowed something, we'd put their name up like on a dry erase board. Right. And it was like, okay, Glenda borrowed a power cord. Some some places they take their driver's license. Y- yeah. I mean, you know, I guess we, because we, because it's not that the, that the cord is that so important, but the next time the store needs the cord, it's not there. Well, and I don't think anybody ever really tried to like steal. No, something it's from not. Us. It's not that anybody's stealing but anything. It's very easy to forget as you're right. just packing up or maybe the class like runs a little late or right. something like that you know uh and then you're you're trying to get right. out of there uh then <laughs> the baby doesn't like people taking the power cords that's right i you know i think another thing that's important is to thank your teacher that's a very good point i mean if you didn't like the class that's a mm-hmm. sam says that's a courtesy yeah, thing that's right and you know you don't have to thank her, I guess, if it wasn't that great of a class, but you can thank her and be specific about what you did learn and what you did like, because that will help her in her teaching. Um, I guess if you didn't like the class, maybe you should tell her why you didn't, but I wouldn't tell her in front of everyone. Yeah, you can send an email. <laughs> you can send an email, fact. whatever, or say, I was disappointed, you know, I thought I was going to get more done, or th- or from the class description, this isn't what I expected. You know, I'm going to, like, way back up here. <laughs> oh, some, no. To something, if you sign up for a class, and the teacher gives you a supply list, and there's, like, a bunch of stuff on it that you don't own, you have to buy the stuff. Okay, you have to have the things required for the class. You need to have them, yes. And if you don't want to buy them, cancel your reservation for the class. Right. Or don't sign up for them. I right. used to have people, it's like I would be teaching a technique or, or um, we'd bring a teacher in who would teach a technique and they'd want the students to have something, okay? And I'd have somebody come in and say, I'm really interested in learning this technique, but I don't want to buy that you know, thing because it's $30. And mm-hmm. it's like, this teacher has a reason. Right. You know, for this and for you to be successful. And I mean, are there teachers out there or shops out there who are trying to just like sell a bunch of stuff with their classes? Well, I okay. Mean, yeah. Yes. Yes, and because that's how stores work. That, that's how okay. stores work. That's how <laughs> stores serve you. They have to make some money. They have to sell things. You know, there are stores that insist that you buy the fabric from them. That's right. Or the thread from them that you're using. Now, we didn't always do that. No. And sometimes we had a packet that you could buy or that went with the class so we didn't have to worry about you not having the I right feel thing. Like this is something that's just been brought up in an earlier podcast at right. some point. You know, we didn't always do that, but I understand stores I do. that may do that. I do too. And you have to just realize that owning a sewing store is not a way to become a multimillionaire. No, it's far general. from it. Well I so you know if you wonder why they why they say, okay, we're gonna teach you all this stuff about quilting or we're going to teach you all this stuff about garment sewing, and then you have to buy your fabric here. Right. You know, it's it's a way to support okay. the store. Not only, and not only is it a way for, to support the store and for them to make money, it's a way for them to know you're going to be successful with have, the technique. Have quality materials. I have had people come into t-shirt class oh. with fabric they bought at, you know, a garage sale. Look what I got. It was a great deal. It was a quarter. And I'm... And, you know, they couldn't even cut the stuff out. It well, was so 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 old is... or so awful, or or it, as soon as they started to sew it, it started getting runs in it. Or and 
So we oftentimes, if we did not say buy the fabric from us or somebody would say, I want to bring my own fabric in, we'd say we want to see it first. Right. Because I I think it's reasonable for someone to say. You want the people to be successful. Well, but I also think it's reasonable for someone to say, I bought like, you know, something dollar a yard fabric that I've really been wanting to make it into a t-shirt. Right. Please let me use this. I, I understand that. But, okay, so if you're a teacher and somebody brings in very questionable fabric, right. whether it's from a garage sale or not, because, yes, right. you can get good fabric from a garage sale. I know. You can get lousy fabric from a fabric a store. store. Yeah, right. exactly. But if you're a teacher, there's only so much you can do. So yes. teachers, you can't berate the student. No. Nope. Student, know that the teacher is not berating you, but – they're might, recommending, they're, they're no, teaching, they, uh, they're they leading. Might also, during the class, if you bring in this crappy fabric, right. they might not feel like they can instruct you because their instructions aren't going to apply to this material that right. they didn't recommend. Right. And you already exhibited that you don't want to follow instructions. That, right, that you, want, <laughs> that you don't want to listen to what they, right, the yeah. information they have for you. I exactly. Mean, when we say, you know, T-shirt fabric of this stretch or this quality – and somebody doesn't bring it in, it's like, well, why the heck are you here? Well, what are you going to learn? you know, if you're in a class and you don't think you can afford whatever, the notions, the, the fabric, the equipment, or whatever, or the, the tuition, whatever it may be, then you don't belong in that class. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Go someplace else. Go someplace you feel you can afford and it's comfortable for you. And there are definitely- Don't ask them to change what they, the class, you know, some of these classes, like I taught classes that I developed over like 10 years. Right. You know, and, and got to the point that I knew why this worked or why something worked. And that's why I did it that way. Well, and we tried to offer several levels of classes. You know, we offered, Absolutely. We offered some lecture classes for... I mean, I don't even want to say the price because I think it's embarrassing. Yeah, don't do that to the other uh, dealers. Um, Yeah, Yeah. you know, we we would offer these classes where you didn't bring a sewing machine. We talked, talked, talked. And some people really... Imagine, Mallory and I talked. Some people really like that. But then we taught classes where we were giving six or eight hours of instruction. Right. And then once again, gosh, did we... I mean, I don't want to say how much we charged for it. But it was really low. You need to break it down by the hour, guys. If you think a class is expensive... Okay, you need to think about the hours that teacher prepped for the class. That's right. And the hours that you're going to learn from them. And then teachers, you need to think about the hours you prepped for the class and the hours you're going to spend with the students. And you're also paying, you, you need to pay for someone's expertise. Yeah. They have learned all that. They know all that. You're gonna, you're paying for that, and you're gonna learn it quicker and faster than they probably did because you, they, you don't have to do all the research. I've got a friend, Stacy. I don't know if she is listening. Uh oh. She's a photographer, right? And I want her to give us some tutelage in uh, taking some good photographs, photographs of, of things our, like uh-huh. for, for our right. vlogs and stuff. I would never. I was going to so expect her to just come ever, over and give nope, that information to you free. Nope, no, nope. it's her livelihood. I would never ask someone to do that for free. I would offer to pay them. Well, and immediately. and from a sewing store, you get a lot of free information already. That's where I think so. You do. Yeah. You know, we always said, call us, you know, email us, whatever. We'll try and figure out your problem over the phone. But, you know, if you're one to take a class... You pay for the class. Well, we also give a lot of, so right now, we give a lot of free information in that Oh, Facebook absolutely. Group and provide, a, I think, a fun community and everything. Right. And just, you know, you, you got to value that and, and value that value that environment, too. It's kind of like a class that goes on all the time. Well, I, I used to think this, too, when someone would complain or about the price or whatever. And I would think, I wonder how many days a week they go to work and work for, for free. free. Yeah. Yeah. And they thought I'm supposed to work for free because of why? I don't now we Are could, my teachers supposed to work for free? Why? That another podcast is yeah. doing sewing stuff for free. And yeah. I think that's really important. The amount of we're getting so off topic here. Um but the amount Well you are. I think I'm I doing am, fine. The yeah. amount of free sewing tutorials out there, I don't think they're bad. But I think it does. You also better, get what you pay for. That's true. But for better or worse. People expect things for free, and then people who do this for a living are expected to do it for free. Okay, and guys, sewing isn't easy if nope. you're going to do it right. I'm telling you. It's an art. It's a, it's, it's a science. You know, it takes it, some brain it, power. It, it, it's technique. 
Yeah, and it's practice, practice, practice. It's not a, you know, like a paint by numbers. Go listen to Only Smart People Sew podcast. Or, and also the podcast when people ask you to sew for them. Right. And we're not saying like that no one should ever do anything for free or, any, you know, do whatever you want. But it is, I think, a phenomenon that happens yeah. in, in this well, world a lot. I, I want them to think about paying teachers because that teacher is there. She's prepared for you. She's showing you this t- technique that she had to go learn someplace or learn on her own or whatever. And she's she's lending her mind to you for that hour, two hour, three hour class. And you can ask her anything you want. And she's right. going to give you a good answer yeah yeah she should she should yeah and teachers you need to value. i keep saying she we've had some male yeah. oh, teachers course, i'm sorry of course yes um he or she uh giving you that information and then teachers you should be valuing yourselves as well absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely okay well i think we've done a pretty good so job. it's everybody going to be really nice in class and Every, yes. and, and and pay attention to your teacher and be and, nice and the worst students i've ever had were retired teachers <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they sit and they talk to each other and you're talking over them and you go, hey, so-and-so, I, I you know, it, you guys can talk, but you can't do it in here. And we have a lot of retired teachers in yeah. our lives, so we can we can talk about them like that. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, uh, thank you all for listening. And you can find us on Facebook in the self Sewn Wardrobe Facebook group. We'd love to have you there. Facebook.com slash groups slash self Sewn Wardrobe. Mom and Sam and I are there to answer your questions. And uh, you can find us on Instagram. We are ZV's Sewing Studio. And think, yeah, Mom, take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com.